a very good day. We are gathering virtually, hopefully for the last time, um, and uh, we're looking forward to being able to together in person in worship. Um, that said, we will of course continue to, uh, to record those services uh, for those who are unable to, uh, to be here or uh, are just uh, not really up to, uh, to getting involved with uh, in-person activities quite yet. So, uh, so that's going to remain on, uh, on the, uh, the agenda and uh, remain a part of our practice over, uh, over the next uh, little bit. It is Lent and, uh, and so we begin with our penitential rite. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. Dear friends in Christ, as we, prepare to, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Cast your burden upon the Lord and he will sustain you. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Blessed be the Lord day by day, the God of our salvation who bears our burdens. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let's worship. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us worship. We continue with a portion of Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go up to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out, and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sackcloth and sat in ashes. Then he had a proclamation made in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, no human being or animal, no herd or flock shall taste anything. They shall not feed, nor shall they drink water. Human beings and animals shall be covered with sackcloth, and they shall cry mightily to God. All shall turn from their evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands. Who knows? God may relent and change his mind 
he may turn from his fierce anger so that we do not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke. When the crowds were increasing, Jesus began to say, This generation is an evil generation. It asks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. For just as Jonah became a sign to the people of Nineveh, so the Son of Man will be to this generation. The Queen of the South will rise at the judgment with the people of this generation and condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to listen to the wisdom of Solomon. And see, something greater than Solomon is here. The people of Nineveh will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, because they repented at the proclamation of Jonah. And see, something greater than Jonah is here. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. A few weeks ago, we were sitting around on a Sunday afternoon, so we decided to uh, put on the Veggie Tales Jonah movie for the kids. And uh, we sat there and watched it with them. It's always, it's always a fun one to watch. Um, it involves pirates who, do, who don't do anything. It involves cheese curls. It involves all kinds of, of wacky stuff, but uh, it also uh, involves a, a picture of what the Ninevites were like, the, the residents of, of Nineveh. And in the movie, what the Ninevites do wrong is they take fish and slap each other in the face with them. The truth is we have no idea what the Ninevites did. We have no idea what, uh, what came between them and God, what, what, what God objected to in terms of their behavior and their way of going about life. We have no idea what that was. All we know is that Nineveh was part of Assyria. Assyria had caused incredible problems for, for the people of Israel. They conquered the northern kingdom. They had attacked the southern kingdom. And the only thing that stopped that and stopped them from defeating the southern kingdom was that they were attacked and defeated themselves from another power. Um, so it is interesting that God would go out of God's way to save these folks. See, they're not part of the, the covenant community. They're not part of, of God's family as such. They are a different nation with their own gods and all the rest. But God goes out of God's way to find a way to save them. And the way that God does that is through Jonah. Jonah, after the whole swallowed up by a whale and spit out on shore and all that kind of stuff, after all of that, Jonah walks into the city. It's a huge city. He stops and he says, 40 days more and Nineveh will be overthrown. That's it. There's not much to it. Jonah goes into the city and basically threatens them with destruction. And they respond. They respond to this prophet from Israel. This Israelite prophet, they respond to, to him and they put on sackcloth, they sit in ashes, the king gets in on it and proclaims that everyone's going to participate in this because they hope that God will see their penitence, that God will, will see their change and relent and let them, let them survive. Jonah threatens them. And the result of that is that they turn to God, begging for mercy, and God gives it to them. God is merciful, kind, and loving towards these people that have, have gone so long. That is not the way things work for us. We're part of the covenant. We have a, a relationship with God. And 
the way that, that God calls us back is very different. God doesn't try and threaten us into behaving as followers of Jesus Christ. Instead, God invites us. Instead of sending Jonah, God sent Jesus. God sent Jesus to teach us, to show us the way, to die for us, and to rise for us. And in that, God invites us to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. God invites us to turn and be part of this extraordinary relationship and to receive mercy and forgiveness and love and goodness and grace in our lives from God through Christ. We're not threatened. We're invited. Lent is, in all honesty, about responding to that invitation. And we all need to respond to that invitation because we are not all hanging out in a state of grace constantly. We know what we're like. We know that there are days when we hold a grudge. We know there's, there's days when we won't forgive. We know there's days when we're impatient. We know the times when we're unkind. We know we have those moments of, of self-centeredness, of selfishness. We know that there is hatred in our hearts. We know there's unkindness on our lips. We know we worry. We know that there are days when we're just apathetic when we don't do the things that we should be doing. We know what we're like. We know we don't pray. We know we don't love our neighbors the way we should. We know there's kinds of people that we just don't like. We know that we've been disrespectful, that we've been ignorant, that we have chosen to ignore God to ignore God's expectations, to ignore the way of life commanded to us by our Lord. We know all of that. But, and, and God does too. I want to say that. God knows that too. But, do, but God doesn't come to us with threats. Instead, God invites us. Throughout, throughout Lent, we hear constantly about God's mercy, God's forgiveness, God's love for us. And we see that so profoundly in the cross. God invites us back into that love so that it can enable and empower us to live as Jesus lived. Lent is about hearing that invitation and responding to it. And I hope that our response is as substantial and as quick as the response of the Ninevites. They were threatened, they turned, and God relented. I hope that we hear the invitation and we immediately seize it. That we immediately turn to God and receive God's love and grace and forgiveness and mercy and love. I hope we turn that immediately. Repentance, in truth, is not an easy thing. But it's a good thing. It is something that fills our lives up with love and with peace and with joy. It is incredible news when it happens. We're being invited once again back into our relationship with God. Let's accept that invitation quickly, immediately even. 
Let's get filled up with God's grace and forgiveness and love. And then let's take that into our world and share it with everyone we encounter. We are being invited. Invited to experience God's love. Let's accept the invitation. Thanks be to God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbors yourself. On these two commandments there is... Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbors yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us pray. Let us pray for the church, for Todd our bishop, for brothers and sisters throughout the world, especially for our St. Mark's family. Let us pray that we would hear God's invitation and respond to it, receiving love and then offering love to God and our neighbor. Let us pray for the leaders of the nations. Let us pray that they would strive for justice and peace, that they would protect the members of the community that need protection, that they would lift up those who struggle, that they would enable everyone to live abundantly. Let us pray for our world, for an end to war and violence and hatred, for an end to discrimination, for an end to bigotry, for an end to the pandemic, for an end to poverty, for an end to the suffering that is caused by natural disaster. Let us pray that those who are in trouble would be relieved, that they would find the grace of God working in their lives through their neighbors. Let us pray for this community, for St. Clair Beach and Tecumseh, for Windsor and all of Essex County. Let us pray for everyone who lives with us. Let us pray that we would live together in peace, that we would share love, that we would help one another and care for one another, that we would turn from what is wrong and live in a way that is consistent with God's expectations and with Christ's example. Let us pray for those who are in need, for the sick, the suffering, the lonely, the depressed, the mentally ill, and the addicted. Let us pray for all those who are on our hearts at this time. Let us pray that they would be healed, helped, restored, and lifted up out of all of their difficulties. Let us pray for those who have died. Let us pray for those who mourn. Let us pray that the good news of the resurrection would bring comfort, peace, and hope to their lives. Finally, let us pray for ourselves. Let us pray that we would be people of repentance, that we would turn to God and receive God's love and God's mercy and God's grace, and that we would share that with our lives, with the words of our mouths. We pray all this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, whose son fasted 40 days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are but did not sin. Give us grace to discipline ourselves in submission to your spirit, that as you know our weakness, so we may know your power to save, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Just before we finish, I want to say please stay home when you can. Please stay safe when you go out. Please stay in touch with each other. It's a great way to share God's love and, and, and in a very real way be a part of that invitation that God extends to us to, to come back and be in relationship with God. I also want to, uh, to say that, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, we will hopefully be back to in-person worship as of Sunday. Um, if you'd like to be part of the 8 o'clock service, then uh, you can just show up. Um, if you'd like to be part of our 1030 service, we ask that you please register in advance. And an email has, uh, has gone out so that you can, uh, you can do just that. Um, we will, of course, continue to record uh, our services. Also a reminder that on Tuesday evenings, um, we will be uh, having our Lenten series, which this year is called Zooming Through Lent with Mark and John. Um, so we'll be looking at the, uh, the gospel readings for the upcoming Sundays uh, in order to, uh, to help, the, uh, help ourselves uh, grow closer to, to our Lord and uh, respond to that invitation of God's love. Now the peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you forevermore. Amen.